I want to show you how you can draw your own Dungeons & Dragons character in just a few simple steps. You don't have to be a super skilled artist. As long as you can draw a couple of really simple shapes, I promise you can make a totally awesome, super fun looking D&D character. Okay, let's jump right in with the tools you're gonna need. Really simple, just a pencil, eraser, and a piece of paper. If you wanna take it a step further and ink and color your drawing, you'll need some sort of pen and colored pencils or crayons, really, whatever you've got, I'm gonna be using Posca markers. I'll have links down in the description to all the tools that I use on the final drawing of my new D&D &D character, Tobald Two Foot. Actually, I'm gonna be playing in a game of Lord of the Rings 5e, so Tobald is a hobbit, not a halfling. I'm very excited to play, very excited to draw my new character, so let's jump into it. I'm starting on a scrap sheet of paper with my pencil, and the first step is to draw what I like to call a block figure. Basically a stick figure, but made out of blocks instead of sticks. I'm just using basic shapes like circles and rectangles to construct this figure, and what I'm really focused on is the proportions. So my character is a hobbit, Already, um, I'm drawing in kind of cartoony proportions, but a hobbit is gonna be like extra exaggerated proportions. So a big round head, short legs, big, big feet. And you can see that I'm just drawing really basic shapes, no details at all. I'm not worried about facial features or hands or toes or in any complicated things. Only thing I'm thinking about is the proportions of the body parts and relationships to each other. Now you might not be drawing a hobbit, but this is a great example of how you can change up the proportions to get your block figure feeling right. So a human might have a more oval head, a skinnier body, longer legs, smaller feet and hands, or you could sketch out an orc. You know, they have a more square head, no neck, super wide body, way longer arms and big hands. And you'll notice that I'm actually describing what I'm drawing almost like I'm describing the appearance of my character. And I find the number one thing that really helps with drawing these block figures is to kind of list out the features of your character. Do they have a big head or a small head? A thin body or a wide body. Maybe they have tiny feet but big huge hands or or maybe they have big huge muscles or a tiny little head. Make a list and then just start drawing the shapes. Start with the head, then the torso, the arms, the hands, the legs, the feet, and then you have yourself a block figure. As you're making a list of your character's appearance, you might be inclined to add some features, hold off at the block figure stage, but now that we've got a good block figure, we can start adding some of those features. I always like to start with the face. Tobald here has pointy ears because he's a hobbit, he's got a big nose, he has one squinty eye and one big wide eye. He's got grins and sideburns and fluffy hair. Again, it helps to make a list of this stuff, but if you get overwhelmed trying this stuff out yourself, I've made a whole other video all about drawing character portraits. There's even a handout that has a bunch of examples that you can just draw right on top of your block figure. Definitely go check out that video if you get stuck drawing the, the facial features of your character. But as you can see, I'm not drawing anything super complicated here. The eyes are ovals, the nose is just a big C, just a, a line for the mouth, and the hair is maybe the most complicated part, but it's still just a few bumps that kind of go on top of the, the head shape. Have fun messing with the, the eyebrows and the eye shape and the, the mouth. You know, change up the mouth to get a good expression that, that really captures the, the feel of your character. And once you're done with the face, then you can move on to adding clothes. Tobald here has a, a scarf that was gifted to him by his grandma. It's just a couple of rectangles, and it goes over a, a big coat that he hides his short sword in. Of course, he's a hobbit, so he's got big, hairy, bare feet. And I know I'm kind of harping on this, but it really helps 
to just sort of like name this stuff off in your head as you're drawing. For me at least, it allows me to sort of focus and narrow down on the, the part that I'm trying to draw in that moment, and then I don't get overwhelmed by all of the other pieces and parts that have to be added to, to make this character complete. And I really like this stage of the drawing. It almost feels like you're dressing up a paper doll or something. It's just those really simple shapes added on top. You can still see the outline of the block figure underneath. When you get to things like hands, they can just be little squiggles for fingers. You know, sometimes I even just draw circles for hands. What I really want you to do is, as you're drawing your character, think about how you can show the, the, the features, the things that you're listing in your mind in the simplest possible way. So even though your character might have like a bunch of cool armor and stuff, try and draw it with just a few lines, like as few lines as you can. You can always add more details and shading and whatever as you go, but this is really just the, the planning phase. So far I've figured out the proportions of my character, I've added features to my character, and now I want to pose my character. So just like before, I'm going to describe what my character is doing in my mind. In this case, I want to draw Tobald. It's like sneaking around. So I think about what does someone that's sneaking look like? Maybe they're hunched over, their arms are out to like keep their balance as they tiptoe real quiet-like. And I'm starting by redrawing the block figure first because I want to start simple and then add details as I go. And I'm almost like going back to step one where I'm really thinking about the proportions. I'm trying to keep the proportions the, the same as my initial block figure. You know, I'm trying to keep the, the head and the body and the limbs and the hand and the feet all in relation to each other while also bending and contorting the, the anatomy of the character to, to kind of like sculpt this pose that I, I'm going for. And then just like before, once you have the block figure figured out, then you can add the features on top, you know, the clothes and the hair and the, the facial features, all that stuff. Now, sometimes the, the clothes and the hair are going to change with different poses, but if you keep it simple, you can figure it out. Don't get frustrated. That's why we're using the pencil and the eraser. Sometimes it takes me three or four or five or 20 times just to, to figure out how to draw the hand in the right way or the feet or you know how the, the head overlaps the body. And actually, that's one of the big secrets about being a, an illustrator or a cartoonist. You know, sometimes one drawing is actually a few drawings or many drawings that have been redone until the, the final drawing feels just right. You know, I really like spending time sketching my characters a few times before making a final illustration just to get a feel for their personality, kind of learning how to change up their expression and their outfit to get the character looking and feeling exactly how I want. And these steps are really, really important because it helps build my confidence. You know, doing these sketches, they're not perfect drawings. They don't have to be perfect drawings. It's all practice. And by breaking it up into these, these steps of proportions and features and pose, I'm able to focus on each of those individual parts and not get overwhelmed by trying to figure all of this stuff out at once. Okay, real quick interjection here. If you still feel like you need some help and guidance drawing the character, I actually do have a, a guidebook called Flick Silver Pin's Guide to Drawing Monsters. So this is more about drawing strange creatures and stuff, but the same principles apply. And this guidebook has a lot of great, helpful info on drawing cool fantasy monsters and characters. I have the physical version in my online shop, and if you want the digital version of this and a whole bunch of other guidebooks, you can get it by joining my Patreon. Links in the description. Okay, all of the practice is out of the way, and now I'm ready to actually draw Tobald two foot. I'm starting the same way as I did before with the block figure. Because this is the final illustration, I'm taking a little bit more time. I'm erasing and changing things and getting the, the pose and the proportions just right. And as I'm drawing this character, I really just want you 
to believe that you can draw fun characters like this. You, you've clicked on this video, you've watched this far, you know, maybe this isn't the, the most involved and in-depth tutorial, but I hope you can really see how taking a little bit of time to try things out and starting simple and adding details as you go, getting more complicated as you go, it really makes the, the process of drawing much more simple than it seems. All right, at this stage, I'm really happy with the, the pencil drawing of Tobald. I almost feel like I could leave it here, but I really do want to add color. So I'm gonna take my Posca markers and color this guy in. I'm working on a, a little sheet of four by six Bristol board, and I'm using the, the Posca markers to kind of fill in the, the flat colors first, and then I'll go over them with line art over top. Again, I'll have links to the, the tools I'm using down in the description. But as I finish up this drawing of Tobald, I really want to tell you about this character. I'm I'm so excited I get to play in this Lord of the Rings role-playing game with my, my friend Kyle and John from Splatbook and Kenny and Jess and David. They started with a, a two-part actual play game on Kyle and John's podcast called Splatbook. I'll have a link down to that in the description as well. You can go check out the introduction to the, the game I'm going to be playing in. Uh, I don't think we are recording it. We're just doing it for fun now because I think they had so much fun playing this Lord of the Rings game. They wanted to keep it going, so I'm I'm really grateful to to be invited and get to play. And of course, since we're playing Lord of the Rings, I absolutely had to make a hobbit. So Tobald here is a treasure hunter. He's a, a fallow hide hobbit, so he comes from up north. That's why he has blonde hair. Like I said, he's got the big overcoat where he can hide his short sword and, and any treasure that he steals along his adventures. I've given Tobald one squinty eye and one wide eye because I like the idea that with one eye he's super focused on whatever he's trying to, to steal with his sleight of hand. And one eye he has open super wide looking out for danger as he's sneaking around. Of course, he's also missing one of his front teeth because he might not be the best pickpocket ever. But Tobald is just one of those hobbits that thinks it's super unfair that Bilbo got to go off and have all these adventures. So now he's setting off to have his own adventure and it's just gonna have fun along the ride. Let me know if you wanna hear more about Tobald's story down the line about his adventures with the rest of the party, with the rest of the fellowship. It's just so, so much fun to, to make new TTRPG characters and a big part of that for me, hopefully for you now too, is to draw them. I really hope you give drawing your own character a shot. It's so much fun. It's so rewarding. It can be simple and easy and awesome. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.